Yes. Mm. Using your advanced mastery, you reduce your body weight to a minimum before stepping into the gaping hole. You fall through with dust choked air to land on the floor of the hall 50 feet below. On landing, you weight a little more than a domestic cat, yet the speaking shock of impact is still rough enough to strain your ankles and force the breath from your lungs. Lose two endurance points. Huh. Damn it. At least of us 30 health points. You hurry across the chamber, zigzagging the, to dodge pillars, chucks of stone of the many bodies of Ixitoga's former undead slave warriors, which are raining down from the upper levels of the Crystal Spire. Aided by a kind master, you eventually reach the lowest level of the spire, with the entrance hall and the Grand Arc open out into the city. You're racing through a torrent of crystal dust towards the Grand Arc, the main exit, when a massive shockwave runs through the entire building. You're within seconds of escaping when, to your horror, you see the walls buckle and the Grand Arc begins to collapse. How high is your endurance at this point? 30. Right. You near roll the die and add 1 for having such high life. 5. You emerge from the crystal spire with barely seconds to spare. As you descend the main ramp which leads her way into the street of Sogon, the great arcway disintegrates completely, bringing with it a vast section of its foundation wall. This collapse begins a chain reaction of destruction that culminates in the spectacular fall of the upper spire, which crashes down upon the city like some massive crystal tree filled, uh, felled at the roots. You run without stopping. To quote what I think Lone Wolf is thinking at this point, Speed away, speed away, run, run, run! I think that sums it up perfectly. You run without stopping through the quaking street to the shattered west gate, and then onward through the deepening snow towards the narrow mountain pass. You're more than a mile from the wall of Sogon when eventually you stop to rest and survey the destruction you're left behind. From a vantage point on a rocky snow swept ridge, you watch the stupendous spectacle that is the fall of Sogon. One by one, its walls and buildings and crystal towers implode and collapse until less than a handful remain. When destruction is over, the black skies brighten and the fierce electrical storm abate. For the first time in 10,000 years, sunlight pierces the perpetual cloud cover of Asia and brings warmth to this frozen land. Greatly hardened by the success of your mission, you set off westwards and retrace your original route through the mountain to the ice caverns on the southern coast. When you arrive there, you are greeted by an unmoving tableau of skeletal warriors, each one frozen in the action it was performing at the time of the Death Lord's destruction. You are eager to return to Force Asgard as soon as possible, and to this end, you descend to the underground lake where the Ixian ice boats are moored. You reach the subterranean lake and go aboard an ice boat moored alongside the stone jetty. With the demise of the Death Lord and its necromantic power, you are fearful that these vessels may no longer be serviceable. Their sorcerer's engines could prove to be as immobile as the warriors, who stand like frozen statues all around the shores of the lake. But fortunately, your fears turn out to be groundless. Why didn't he take the submarine instead? Don't know. Well, let's yeah. sail out in a, in a yellow submarine. A what? A yellow submarine. You quickly discover that these ice boats are propelled by Ixian witchcraft, and arcane art far older and more benign than the Death Lord's wild necromancy. Having satisfied yourself that your chosen vessel is seaworthy, you cast off its hawser and steer it away from the jetty towards the white cave mouth which opens out into the stormy Tosa Sea. The elation of victory is still buoying your mind, your spirits, yet there's a nagging unease in the back of your mind that not everything is as it should be. Guided by your kind instincts and the night stars you set south from the course for Asgard Island, the Tosa Sea is unusually calm for most of this lonely voyage and has such a few until the dawn of your second day. Through the grey winter's gloom, you see the unwelcome sign of a Tosa's iceberg field stretching across the southern horizon. At first it looks impenetrable, but as you sail closer, you identify two breaks in the ice field that could be the beginning of a passage through the far side. Do you wish to steer your craft into the southeasterly passage or the southwesterly passage? Mm. Just a moment, I'll flip a coin. Okay. Uh, so, head, west, tails, east. I don't know. Uh, head. We sail west. To the west. Your chosen passage is wide and deep the whole way, enabling you to navigate a course through the ice field with ease. Within three hours of entering, you emerge on the far side without a scratch, and are able to continue your voyage to Fort Asgard without further delays. Two days out from the Toast Ice Field, you can sight of Fort Asgard. After the ordeal of Ixia, the site of a Spartan little outpost is one of the most welcome site welcome um, one of the most welcoming The site of this Spartan little outpost is one of the most welcoming you have ever seen. There. The garrison salutes you as you bring your ship to the quayside where Lord Arden, Captain Lancer, and Prague are waiting to welcome you back. 
Warmly they congratulate you, praising your inspired act of courage and bravery. But you sense that all is not well. The feeling of a niche which haunted you upon leaving the Ice Council of Ixia has returned. Where's Paindon? You ask of Lord Arden. Is something wrong? Arden's face grows as, som as somber as his reply. King Ulna sent word to Sanek's court, summoning the Guildmaster to return urgently to Summerland. It is a grave news, I'm afraid, Grandmaster. In your absence, your country has been attacked. The Dark God Nor has sent forth a host of dragon creatures to destroy the Second Order of the Kai and lay waste to your homeland. Wow. God damn it! We're out trying to... I cannot to turn my back on that land for five seconds without it having been, a been attacked. Yep, yeah, can't go kill Lich King without dragons attack. What the fuck? Uh, I'm, I'm reminded of something from uh, Age of Empires 2. <laughs> something in the Barbarossa campaign. Hmm? Um, what was it? As long as Barbarossa was so... As long as Barbarossa's knights were present, peace was maintain maintained. Something like that. But the emperor could not be everywhere at once. When when he decided, when he went to Italy, Germany would flare up, and he would and when he returned to Germany, the Italians would, would begin plotting again. <laughs> yeah, it is said because his one place problem starts another. Problems will begin in another. That's kind of how I feel right now. Uh, yep. It is said his new minions are confident of swift swift victory, for they are sure you'll never defeat the Death Lord of Ixia. Well, fold them on that one. I must leave for someone at once, you say, looking to the eastern horizon. My brethren, and my brethren and my country needs me. The others nod in silent agreement. We will do all we can, replies Lord Arden, to speed your passage home. The news of your country's plight comes as a terrible shock. In Ixia, you have won a great and lasting victory against the forces of evil. But could the cost be too great? You fear also for the lives of your young Kai acolytes. And your staff of zombies and crocodile people. The Second Order are worthy Kai warriors, but they are young, their metal yet to be tested in the furnace heat of battle. You pray to Kai himself that they be strong enough to resist Nars' newest champions, at least until you return. The challenge of the long journey home and the quest to save the Second Order of the Kai from the deadly wrath of Norse newest champions awaits you in the next Grandmaster adventure. Well, that was Lone Wolf, the Death Lord of Ixia. What do you all think? Well... It was pretty fucking cool to meet a villain that the other villains we faced so far was terrified of. Mm. I mean, the Dark Lords feared him. Even Tagazim, the demon, <laughs> served him as a, basically a minion. Yeah. That he, was kind of cool. He had a bad case of kicking the dog. That, yeah. Uh, but That's sort of I just sort of feel sorry for Tagasin. I can see where you're coming from there, but um, I would also feel a bit sorry for him. But then again, he is... Um, he's not exactly pleasant company, to be honest. Oh, there's also a p uh, picture of the Death Lord that I kind of missed out on. Do we want to oh. see him? Yeah, sure. Yes, yeah. please. Apparently, oh. there are two fights, and this is when my picture only shows up in one, and I kind of didn't notice that before now. <laughs> but yeah, this is how he looks. Mm. Mm. Well, if I'm not mistaken by looking at him, it looks as if this skull thingy is almost as if fused to a human head. But it might just be something due to the necromancy that revived him, yada yada yada, I don't know. In any case, anything else you want to add? He looks uh, kind of no. ridiculous, but that's that. <laughs> yeah, I think it's because his pr uh, proportions are a bit off in the picture. Yeah, perhaps. perhaps. And as for adding something else, I just get the vibe that in this campaign, of all things, it just felt like every situation and everywhere around, stuff was trying to kill us. Well, that's hardly news. <laughs> yeah, I know, but this time it just felt more direct for some reason. Mm. Almost as if... If there had been in previous campaigns where we ju just get subtle hints that everything can kill us, in this, it just felt like it had gone all out and we cannot turn around a corner without some, I know I'm exaggerating, but without some missile launcher to our face. Well, that does say something about this guy's ability to construct a base of operations. Then again, he had plenty of time to do so. Yeah. So yeah, anything else you want to add or what's that it? 
Hmm. I don't know. I cannot really think of anything too special. Okay. Well, if nothing else, the bad guys should be running out of ancient evils at this point. I mean, you kill plenty of them at this point. So maybe we, he will actually show his face so we can have a confrontation. Who knows? So I can... But in any case, this has been Eric Cobra. And Ron and Arja. And Warlord 1. And Divinia. And this has been Let's Play Lone Wolf Blind. See you all around. Yeah. See ya. Oh. See ya. See ya.